A Dongfeng-51 can carry 10 miniature missiles. When the DF-51 flies to a certain area and launches 10 atomic bombs at the same time. The power is so great that the existing air defense system of the United States cannot bear it at all. Foreign media speculate that China's latest intercontinental ballistic missile DF-51 has completed the design, and the prototype will soon complete test flights in recent years. According to the technical parameters speculated by foreign media, once this brand new national heavy weapon enters service, it will become the strongest intercontinental missile in human history. Why is it the strongest? Before Dongfeng-51, who was the strongest land-based intercontinental missile in history? Regarding this issue, some people say it is Russia's Sarmat, some say it is China's Dongfeng-41, and others say it is the American Trident 2 and Minuteman 3. But in fact, considering the comprehensive technical characteristics and the leading degree of the same period, human missiles the pinnacle of the industry is the United States Peacekeeper Intercontinental Missile, but the United States has already decommissioned it 25 years ago. When it was retired, this heavy weapon had only been in service for less than 10 years. His successor, the United States is currently in active service. The Minuteman 3 is currently the most criticized land-based intercontinental missile among China, the United States and Russia. Why does the United States eliminate advanced ones and use such an unsatisfactory militia in a tinkering manner? There are two reasons. One is that the military-industrial complex believes that after the end of the Cold War and the disintegration of the Soviet Union, the United States' biggest opponent has disappeared. There is no need to maintain such a powerful intercontinental missile. The money saved can be used for the research and development of other sophisticated weapons. No. Most of them were corrupted. Second. The United States found that the role of land-based intercontinental missiles has gradually diminished in its confrontation with China and Russia. Especially after China's land-based mid-course anti-missile tests have repeatedly succeeded. In other words, it is very difficult for the land-based intercontinental missiles that humans can build to destroy the continental anti-missile systems of military powers such as China, the United States and Russia. So they simply stopped doing it and focused on the next generation of missiles. Why can't it break the defense? Because the launch route of land-based intercontinental missiles is quite fixed compared to sea-based and air-based missiles. Ordinary intercontinental missiles can cost hundreds of tons, and the ability to change orbits during flight is very weak, especially when carrying multiple missiles. In the case of separate guided nuclear warheads, it is difficult for side launches to maneuver enough to evade interceptors. Therefore, for the three top military powers of China, the United States and Russia, basically every possible launch route is recorded, not to mention the real-time detection by infrared early warning satellites, so it is very difficult to break the defense. However, Dongfeng-51 may be able to stage another possible defense breakthrough, only taking the blind spots of satellites and radars. dedicated to taking the Arctic route and maneuvering the entire course. Dongfeng-51 does not take the usual route, but can directly hit the hinterland of the United States. The key to Dongfeng-51 being called the strongest in the world lies in its ability to do not take the usual path and break through the defense of the United States from the back door. The territory of the United States is divided into two parts. One is Alaska bought by Tsarist Russia, and the other is the mainland with Canada in the middle. The current defense system of the United States is mainly based on the east and west coasts of the mainland. From the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean, there are U.S. warships and military bases along the way. There are also strategic patrolling early warning aircraft and spy satellites in the sky. So the hit rate of hitting the U.S. mainland from the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean is quite low. Then, the key to breaking the defense lies in Alaska. Everyone knows that Alaska is extremely cold and surrounded by the Arctic Ocean where ice flows run rampant all year round. It is difficult for the U.S. Aegis warships to form strategic patrols, and its air defense capabilities are weaker than those of the mainland. 
Therefore, here will be the key to Dongfeng 51's penetration. But it should be noted that Alaska is not a white land. The US military has deployed a large number of anti-missile radars here, with a detection range of more than 5,000 kilometers. In other words, as long as the missile flies within 5,000 kilometers close to Alaska and does not enter the mid-course flight with a speed exceeding Mach 10, the possibility of being shot down and intercepted is still very high. This happens to be the strength of Dongfeng 51. It is speculated that Dongfeng 51 has a range of up to 17,000 kilometers when it carries a nuclear warhead. Which means that Dongfeng 51 launched in China will have sufficient time to enter a high altitude and high speed flight state. What is the flight speed in this state? According to foreign media speculation is 19 Mach. Mach 19, any aircraft known to mankind cannot intercept it. What's more? Dongfeng 51 also has the ability to change orbits. This track change is not a small repair of the side thruster engine of the original Dongfeng 5B, but a turn comparable to that of the Russian Onyx. This not only means that China has broken through the black barrier shielding effect formed by the radio system at speeds above Mach 5, but also means that China has made a breakthrough in military material science. The strength of the missile structure can already withstand large overload maneuvers. So what if someone intercepts it in the early stage? What if it hits the missile silo? First of all, for the initial strike, there must be missiles capable of penetrating China. Secondly, Dongfeng 51 will almost certainly adopt a cold launch method. Which means that compared with the huge silo required for thermal launch of Dongfeng 5B, the silo of Dongfeng 51 will definitely smaller and stronger, Salmut's well can resist 8 tactical nuclear bombs, Dongfeng 51 is not too much to resist 10, right? Therefore, Dongfeng 51 is the strongest in the world.